Well, hello, hello, and welcome to Melissa's Crafting Treehouse. Um, I have some fun crafting for you tonight. It is looking like I've been live for a minute and a half, and I swear to God, I just pressed the button to go live. <laughs> so uh, hopefully I wasn't actually live all the time <laughs> doing things like blowing my nose, fixing my hair, who knows? <laughs> anyway, um, Based upon the fact that there's nobody here yet, that probably means that I didn't go live uh, as early as it's telling me. So um, anyway, comment when you've joined in to say hello. Um, I have a, a fun project for you. It's in the screen off to the side over there. Um, and I'm going to spend most of my time focusing on that project. Now, I'm actually making a different color scheme than what you see there. So in the end, we're going to have basically four different versions of my project. So I'm going to switch over and show you my desktop so you can get a look at the projects that we're making. So welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining in. Hi, Elizabeth. Good to see you here. Thanks for letting us know you're from Atlanta. Yay, not too far from me. <laughs> um, do comment and uh, say hello. Let me know where you're from and uh, if you've been here before or if you're new. Either way, welcome, whether you, you've been around and, and joined me before or if you're brand new. So um, the projects you see here are um, the cards I'm going to make, but in a different color scheme. So I just love these. Super excited about these projects. I was feeling very fall-like, so did some fall colors. Um, I'm going to show you the products that we're using for these uh, cards. So the Gorgeous Garden Dyes are really the featured product, and they fill up pretty much the whole front of a card. So there's got you've got leaves and these beautiful flowers. Um, and these are pretty new to me, so I'm super excited to get to play with them. Anybody has these, comment and let me know if you've played with them and you love them. Somebody commented on my uh, note saying that's what I was using, saying they have them and love them. The other thing I'm using is something that's going to be new in the uh, mini catalog that goes live in September. If you're a demonstrator, you might have been able to pre-order this. Uh, a great perk of being a demonstrator. This is one of the bundles that's in the new mini that goes live to customers on the 6th of October. I'm sorry, September. <laughs> Why I said October, I have no idea. Um, this stamp set and the coordinating dies. And we're going to be using this die here for the sentiment. And we're going to be using some of the sentiments from the set. So super excited about this one. I love fall. I don't know about you guys, but fall is really my favorite season. I love the colors and I love the temperature. And uh, so if you're just joining in, Again, this is, this is the basic card design that we're making, and um, we're going to do a different color scheme. So let's go ahead and jump in. Now, if you were here last week, um, you know that we did a fun technique with uh, watercolor, and it's one of my favorites. It's a super simple way to do watercolor, and we're going to do it again today because why not? And it's just so much fun. Um, that, um, but I'm going to be doing something slightly different with it too. So we're going to bring in some paper towels because this is kind of an inky, messy kind of technique. And in this case, unlike last week, I'm using a much bigger block. This is the F size block by Stampin' Up. And I am pulling out some ink colors. I've got Tahitian Tide, Orchid Oasis, and Starry Sky, and Gorgeous Grape. Love this color palette. I'm sure if you know me at all, you know. <laughs> it's one of my go-tos. So we're going to start with, um, oh, you saw the dies in the catalog? Yes. Um, hi, Tracy. Good to see you here. Thanks for commenting. And again, if you're joining in, please comment and say hello and let us let us know that you're out there, um, where you're from, if you've been here before, want to be able to welcome you if you're new. Okay, so I'm starting with my Tahitian Tide. And I'm just going to go in on the edge. Now, whenever I do this, it always seems like whatever the lightest color is has the tendency to get overshadowed. So I'm going to be uh, liberal with using this one. This is the lightest color that we're putting on here. So I'm going to actually do like it's more than a third, really. And then I'm going to grab my Orchid Oasis. And I'm going to turn my block over so that I can get to this other side. 
And I always start with the lightest color first because uh, that just helps to avoid contamination. If I get a little bit of that blue on this one, it's not a big deal, but if vice versa, that can be a big deal because I might get, uh, yes, the turquoise on this, I'm sorry, the, this, this orchid oasis on the Tahitian Tide would not be good. It would definitely muddy up that color quite a bit. Okay, next up is the starry sky, even darker color in here and I'm kind of going for about a third or the center third is the um, these bluish purples the starry sky and the orchid oasis and then I'm going to do a little bit of purple on the bottom edge you love that first color I know the Tahitian tide such a pretty color and these are the um, well these three Tahitian Tide, Orchid Oasis, and Starry Sky are three of the five uh, 2022, 24 in colors. I am in love with them. I, you know, I used them like crazy when they first came out, and I've continued to use them a lot because I just love them. And of course, I'm a great, I'm a, uh, um, <laughs> a purple girl. <laughs> so I use the gorgeous grape quite a bit as well. All right. So now I've got my just a spritzer, water spritzer. And let's see what I got. Oh, I just realized I think I might be missing a piece. I am missing a piece. Okay, I have to cut a piece of cardstock. This is an important piece. And I forget to do that. All right, I've got a piece of watercolor cardstock. I'm just going to quickly cut it off camera because, yeah needs to be cut. <laughs> here, we'll bring it in here off the side. Best laid plans. I always think I've got it all prepared and then I forgot a detail. Okay, so we're going to come in at, I'm going to do this kind of on the big side. It's going to be four and three eighths by uh, five and three quarters. That's the right size. So yeah, I wanted to pretty much cover the whole thing. I'm going to do five and five eighths. All right. Now I got what I need. <laughs> Watercolor paper is crucial for this technique. So gotta have it. Okay. Got my watercolor paper. It's just about the same size as my block. And I'm just going to spray this. Now, I want to spray it liberally, but not too liberally. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Ah, yes. Um, <clears throat> oh, look. I, I, I didn't realize I was doing that. <laughs> Hi, Megan. I just put your, your comment on the screen. Welcome. Good to see you. You have those dyes um, and you can't wait to see what I do with them. Okay, cool. All right. I just learned something new. I can actually put somebody's comment on the screen, but I didn't mean to do that. So anyway, um, it's good to see you here, Megan. I'm so glad you joined us. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Lorley. Glad to see other people joining in. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so water, water bottle, my spritzer. Now I'm going to spray it again, liberally, but not so liberally that it mixes and dilutes. So I say about five sprays ish okay and it depends on the size of your spray bottle if you're using one of the tiny little stamp it up spritzer bottles that don't have a lot of water that not as much water comes out so it depends on what water bottle you're using to spritz as to how many sprays you're going to do so i got one two three four five six and then i'm just going to kind of gauge it i want the ink to move a little bit on there and it's not quite yet so i'm doing six and seven we're going to stop there for now and what i'm going to do is just i want to just let the ink move a little bit so that the colors blend just a little bit so you can see the purples going into the blues and the blues going into the turquoise and that's about as much as i want all right so now let's lift this baby up Got my watercolor paper there, and I am going to press it right down on here. This is one of my favorite parts because 
you can watch the ink smoosh onto the paper and do a little blending. All right. Now, my next step is probably the trickiest step because if I lift it up uh, towards me, the blue and the, the blues are going to pull down towards the purple. If I lift it to the right, they're going to pull to the right, lift to the left, you know, so on and so forth. And I don't want the colors to mix too much. So what I really like to do is just put straight up if I can. But the trick is getting, getting something underneath to help me do that. So I'm just going to separate that out a little bit. You can see there's quite a bit of water on there. And it's going to be different every time. Here we go. Ha! Okay, that didn't work. That worked pretty well. All right, so check out all that fun kind of texture on there. That's going to dry and be so pretty. I can already tell. Each one's going to turn out a little bit different. That's part of what makes this fun. And you can see the color towards the bottom is kind of oozing down towards the bottom and um, mixing in. Oh my gosh, that's just going to be so pretty. Now, if I had a piece of watercolor paper, I could use this residual ink. I'm not going to do that right now, but um, it's really fun to see what the next printing would do. Um, it'll be lighter, but uh, could also be really pretty with this blend of colors. But for the time being, I'm going to set that off to the side and I need to allow this to dry. That is just going to be so gorgeous. I am excited about that piece. All right. So this is going off to my side. You'll get to see that again in a bit. And let's bring my paper back in. All right. So now if you missed at the beginning, these are my original cards, but as you can see, I'm doing the design tonight in my <clears throat> blues and purples. So I've got a white card base here and these are going to be my pieces for the inside. I've got a piece of Orchid Oasis and a white layer on top. And I have done one of the watercolor pieces uh, earlier and I die cut it already just to kind of move things along. So I did this shape instead of the leaves. So you can see how gorgeous that is. Um, so we are doing this card with the die cut piece colored. So before I attach it, now I've made this the full size of the front of the card. Um, on this one, I had a little white around the outside edges, but I think for this one, I'm just going to let it cover the whole front of the card. Um, when you're using these die cuts, because they are um, almost a full card front size, if you, um, if you cut your card stock too small, you can end up, you know, by accident, if it slips, not having an edge. So it's better to start with a bigger piece than an exact size piece like the die, okay? You want it to be bigger. So for the piece here, this is now cut down to four and a quarter by five and a half, and it's gonna fit right on the front of the card. Before I do that though, I wanna add some dimension to this. So what I like to do is cut some additional uh, white dies and layer them up. So I have a couple layers in behind. So that's what we're gonna do next. So I'm gonna bring in just a piece of plain white cardstock and I've got a sponge and my multi-purpose liquid glue right here. Now the way I like to do this, I'm gonna set that aside. This is a dedicated piece of card of, of paper so that I can get glue on it and it's not gonna cause me a problem. I've got this white piece cut ahead of time and I'm just gonna lay it down here. Now I'm gonna take my sponge and I use this sponge again and again as long as I rinse it after I'm done. I need to use my right hand. <laughs> and I'm just gonna cover the whole surface. I don't want any big splotches on there. I'm spreading it out. This will help me to spread it more easily by having just a nice thin surface on my sponge. And then I'm gonna grab one of my handy release sheets from some adhesive that I used. I want something to be able to hold this down and it might get sticky. So I don't want the paper here to move. So I'm just gonna cover it, dab it all over. 
And I'm going to do it again. I need maybe three swipes of my glue on my sponge to get it to um, fill up the whole thing. Oh, I'm so glad you like it, Megan. <laughs> um, wouldn't it be easier to put the paper on top of the ink instead of under it? Well, it could be. Um, it could be. It's definitely a reasonable way to do it. I like to kind of stamp the ink onto it. It's a little bit easier to see where the ink is, and then when you take it off, you can control it a little bit better. At least I feel like I can. But that's definitely a, a, a reasonable option. You would want a piece of... Um, scrap paper to put over the top so you could press it down onto it since you don't have the weight of the block to do that. Um, but that's definitely an alternative, Tracy, if you want to do it that way too. All right, so now I'm going to put this at the top. It has glue on there, but I can hold it down because it's the release sheet and it's not going to stick. Famous last words. We hope it won't. <laughs> All right, so now pull that off. It didn't stick. Yay. <laughs> got my sponge off to the side. And what I like to do is um, I've got a little, little old accessory container so that my, my sponge doesn't get all stuck, goopy, hard on the surface. I just, I'm going to leave that in there while I'm demonstrating and then I'll clean it off later. Um, just in the sink. Now I want to take this off of my paper just so that it doesn't actually stick to the paper. I'm going to fold it over so that all the stickiness is hidden underneath. And then let's get our die cut gorgeous colored piece over the top. Now, I might have to get my head and camera here because now I need to line it up just so. This one is actually a lot easier to line up and do what I'm doing now then, the leaf one. The leaves actually move around a bit. So having this added dimension is just so pretty. So now I've got that extra layer in behind. And you can see there's a couple of spots where it's a little bit off. I'm going to have white in behind. So it's actually, if there's a little bit of white, showing it's not going to be a problem because it'll kind of blend in with the white in the background but i do want to try to move it if i can because it's the white glue doesn't dry right away you can kind of move it into place all right now i could do another uh one of my dies in behind but I think I'll stick with just the one here. You can do as many as you want. So now I've just got one extra layer back there. I could do two extra layers. I could do three extra layers. Um, let's see how it looks on the white card body. I'm going to trim off the ends as well because it's hanging off a little bit. Hmm. I kind of want more dimension. And I do ha have an extra one handy. Do I have an extra one handy? Yes, I do. So let's do that again. And I'm going to, again, put it on the front. Oh, I put my sponge in the water. Forget it. <laughs> One layer is good enough. <laughs> I have to squeeze it out, and then I get water on my thing. So we'll just st stick with this. All right. So now I'm going to bring my cutter in. You can see there's some little white edges on the edge here. Uh, I'm just going to trim those off so that this is going to end up being four and a quarter by five and a half. I think it is already, should already be five and a half um, this dimension. So there we go. Okay. Not perfect, but it's close enough. All right. So now I uh, well, look at that. I have a couple of, of the little pieces that didn't come out. Oh, they're there. Oh, I was going to show you. I have to show you guys another trick. Just realized. I have to show you another trick. So. Now the card body is a tiny bit wider than the piece. 
So I might just trim down my card body just the, the tiniest little bit so that it sits in behind. I'm going to do that off camera rather than bringing it on camera again. I'm coming back. I'm right over here. Okay. All right. So now I do actually need to do that, the same glue trick to uh, on the back side. I was too quick to put my sponge in the water. So I'm going to actually squeeze it out off camera. It's not going to be a terrible thing that it's got water in it. I'm just um, pressing it on my paper towel off to the side so that it's not super wet. And that should be fine. All right. So I do need to do the same thing on the back side. All right. All right. Let me show you this other trick before I do that, and then I'll have one I need. Okay. I know. All over the place here. Okay. So what I wanted to show you is a trick for cutting with these die cuts. And I'm going to bring my big cutter in, my big uh, die cut machine, rather. And especially when you're doing the leaf shape, all of that detail, it sometimes doesn't come out um, of the die very well. And so this is, um, you may have heard of this trick where you, when your dies don't want to release the paper, you can run your die with a piece through, uh, you can run this through the die cutting machine with a piece of wax paper. It puts a little bit of waxiness onto the die itself and allows the, um, the paper to release better um, when you go and put some paper in there. But I discovered today um, something I, I don't think I've actually tried before, uh, which worked really, really well. Um, and that was to actually put my wax paper on here and my cardstock. Okay, so I've got, um, I'm going to want to center my um, die on the white piece. And I like to put it at a slight angle because um, when your die goes through, if it's exact straight edge, it tends to make this big noisy sound and it's hard to get it through the, the, um, the machine at the very front because of that, the edge. So if you put it at a slight angle where the point is going in first, um, it can really help with that. Now, the other thing I'm gonna use here is my press and seal. I like to use a little piece of press and seal to hold my paper down and your die is going to slide on the wax paper. Kind of that's the whole point of, you know, helping it come out. But this one's been well used, this piece of um, press and seal, but I'm going to use it on here to hold down my die onto my paper. Is it sticking? I'm doing the wrong side. Okay, and I'm going to stand up just to try to make sure I can see that it's centered. The magic is really when it comes out of the machine. So, all right, putting my second cutting plate over the top. And when I do this, I actually like to do... Um, go back and forth a couple times just to make sure that it's really cutting. The wax paper is not so thick that I'm worried about it, but it's a really detailed die. So um, better be safe than sorry. So I'm going back and forth. I think that was three passes. Get that off screen. And then we got our piece in here. Okay, you can see some of the pieces just came out without any effort right onto the, um, the cutting plate. And I'm just going to bring my little brush and foam thing in to help me release it. I'm going to take off the press and seal. And then I like to just rake over it a little bit to help pieces come out. Mostly, they don't usually all come out, but most of them will. And then you can see, this is just gonna come out like so easily. 
was that super easy like it just released and it's because of this wax paper so it's a really really good trick for helping especially with a detailed dye like this still cut out the paper just the way i needed it to there's a little bit of residual wax paper in there you need to remove you got to make sure you remove it from here as well but it's a great trick for working with especially these highly detailed dyes so i didn't even have to work at getting those pieces out now i will say that the leaf um dye is a little bit more work but um this one uh, it, it's still better with the wax paper and there are a few other little pieces in there that need to come out but i think it's mostly mostly everything came out with little effort so we love that right all right, so now I got the additional white piece that I wanted to put on the back side. Let's bring in my scrap paper again. I'm gonna have to cut this down again. I might cut it down, I think I'm gonna cut it down ahead of time before I put the glue on, so I won't have to mess with it again. Okay, I'm gonna trim off the ends just a little bit, the sides. Okay, how's everybody doing out there? <laughs> you just unpacked those dies? Oh, I love that, Laura Lee. Yay, so now you have a use for them immediately. Okay, so just gonna get the sizing on that, make sure it's still gonna be hidden in back there. So I want it to be a tiny bit smaller, which it looks like it is. Okay, I do have a couple of pieces that are still in there. This seems to be the one spot. If it's gonna get stuck, that's where it is. Darn. I might just be leaving those ones in. I don't know that it really matters. Okay, we're gonna leave a few of those in. So I don't really wanna mess with that right now. Okay, so let's do our glue. Glue, glue, glue. And the sponge. Okay, let's do this quick. <laughs> Cover the whole thing up with my glue. And I've used this, this sponge quite a number of times. And I've got my release sheet again. Make sure there's no wet glue on there. So we're gonna just build up, build up the layers. That's really what makes this um, design so special to me, is the added dimension that you get from all the layering. You don't have to do that because the colors in the background are also really pretty. Yeah, these are fun. Just makes it so easy to design too because the the dot die pretty much carries the whole design. Okay. Okay, off my gluey piece. And I do like to have a silicone craft mat when I'm working with something gluey to keep my work surface clean. All right, so let's get this on now. I'm going to have a couple of white spots. You can see them there. Probably right in there and there. Look how easy that was to put on. So easy. Let's see if those... Oh, that one came out. I actually can just pull those off because I'm just realizing it's not going to show. Yes. Oh, good. I love it. Okay. One more gluing. Let's see. Press that upside down on itself. And I got my, my uh, sponge again. Okay. 
Have I healed well? It's a very good question, Tracy, <laughs> from my surgery, I'm assuming you mean. Um, so now, of course, I got it upside down, right? I was doing the top layers of the, um, just the white layers, but now I've turned it upside down so that I can attach this to the front of the card. Um, yeah, I'm healing pretty well. Um, I have an, uh, my two-month uh, doctor's appointment for my hip um, this coming, let's see, next week, actually, a week from today, in fact. And uh, looking forward to it. Um, my doctor at my one-month appointment told me I should be walking at least 15 minutes a day. And there are some days here where it is so hot and humid that I cannot get myself to go out. But uh, on the days that are a little bit more reasonable, I've been walking anywhere from 50, I'm sorry, 15 minutes to almost an hour uh, in my neighborhood. And uh, this morning was a beautiful morning. We actually had what felt a little bit like some fall-ish weather. It was like 66 first thing in the morning. But I'm getting up early, take advantage of the, the cooler morning and my hips managing it. I'm needing to stretch and do all that kind of stuff to strengthen, strengthen me up. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Let's see. So I have glue everywhere. Now this is getting nice and thick and I love it. Okay. All right. So now we're going to move that off to the side, move all the potentially gluey stuff. And, oh, dang. <laughs> Alrighty. Good thing I have my silicone craft mat there. Let's turn that over in case there's any glue. All right. So now let's put this around the front. Is there a top or bottom? Do I need the purple on the top or the bottom? Let's see. Can't really tell if there's really an upside and a downside. It looks pretty good. I think I'm going to do the purple on the bottom because it's nice and dark. It kind of underlines the whole thing. Okay. Again, so easy to get that on there. Got a little bit of residual glue on my fingers, but look at that beautiful dimension you've got in there. With um, We've now got three layers, two white layers in behind and the colored layer, which is watercolor paper, so it's, um, it's also a little bit thicker than regular paper, too. All right, let's get a sentiment on here. Now, I have die cut this piece, and I showed you earlier. It comes from this autumn leaves uh, set of dies, coordinates with the autumn leaves stamp set, so those dies. Um, nice, really nice uh, shape, I think. And uh, we're going to stamp a couple of words on there. Want my embossing buddy as well. Okay. Now I'm going to build the two sentiments here. So there's uh, with a grateful heart, which I love, love that sentiment. And I'm going to stamp a small little word down below. So I'm going to justify this towards the top. And the words that's going below is um, today and every day. So with a grateful heart, today and every day. I try to be grateful every day. I have much to be grateful for, without a doubt. All right, now I've got my white embossing powder here. Go ahead and just heat it up. Okay. I'm so glad you like it, Melissa. I love these colors. Can't go wrong. Um, 
I'm going to have four designs before we're done. <laughs> So there's my little sentiment. Love that color. Love the white with the orchid. Now I'm going to put a little bit of uh, adhesive on the back side to prepare for the next step. Take my silicone craft mat to help bring forward that adhesive. For this one, I'm going to use a piece of silver. Um, the Simply Elegant trim comes with silver and gold in it. And I'm just going to wind it around my fingers. I want to go around three times. And then I'm literally just going to place it down onto that adhesive. And then I can mess with kind of arranging it how I might want. So there we go. I'm going to trim off those ends. I pretty much like just the way that is. Need my scissors. I could leave the tails hanging out, but I'm just going to trim them off so that they're hidden. There we go. Now I'm going to put dimensionals in the center and I have one that I actually finished. So I'm just going to grab that one. <laughs> I use the dimensionals um, to uh, sort of hold down the twine or the cord. And there is some adhesive exposed on the back. So I'm just going to use my embossing buddy to tap on it until that exposed adhesive is no longer sticky. I needed that adhesive there so I'd have something for the cord to attach to, but now we're good to go. All right, so now we're just going to go ahead and put the sentiment on there. I get to decide where I want to put it. I had it on the bottom on the other one. What do we think? Bottom or the top? <laughs> what are the sets of the large dies? Yes. Hi, Ellen. Welcome. Hi, Sharon. So this is the gorgeous garden dies this comes in the pair. So my original design was with the leaves. I'll bring those back into camera in a minute. And the one I'm using now is the gorgeous garden. So they come together. It's a great little pair of dies. I think it has to go down at the bottom. So, <laughs> Oh, Karen, you want it on the top? <laughs> I didn't hear any, any, see any other comments, but the top kind of spreads out the dark color because there's more dark on the bottom. <laughs> Anybody else want to vote? Sway my, sway my decision? I don't know. <laughs> you had some pet sitting, Sharon? <laughs> oh, I'm glad you love the card. Um, I'm excited to show you the other one, too. Okay, I have to put it at the bottom. It just feels right on the bottom to me. Sorry. Okay, Barbara, you agree with me. Okay, I have one other vote for the bottom. <laughs> I feel validated. Um. <laughs> oh, and Laura, you like in the bottom too. Okay, good. Sorry, Karen. <laughs> you got outvoted. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Now, I am also going to add in a couple of sequins. I've got these um, adhesive backed sequins. They come in all these neutral colors. And I just need to find spots that I think are suitable. I like to kind of create a bit of a kind of triangle and I'm putting them in the white recessed area. So let's see if I can find a spot that actually fits the, the large one. No, maybe I want that right there. Okay, and then let's find another one for somewhere up here. So in my mind, I'm looking for this sort of, I don't know, like an arrangement. Arrangement of them, yeah. 
I guess I'll just put it right there. Does anybody else do that? Go back and forth, him and ha. <laughs> so I've got one down here, one here, and one there. Now I want another one up there. <laughs> Maybe I'll do two more. Why not, right? It's a bigger card because, of course, the, I don't have an edge. A little bit bigger. So, yeah, why not? So there we go. So that's my finished card. So it's slightly different from the original one of the same layout. So because I didn't have a white edge on it. So the one on the right is my original one using the leaves. I used um, Cajun Craze, Crushed Curry, and Mossy Meadow for um, the watercolor background on this die cut piece. And I've only got one extra layer underneath this one. I have two, so I don't know if you can kind of appreciate, probably can't really appreciate it on camera, but this has more dimension, a little bit more than this one, both really pretty, I think. And of course, there's no out white outline on this one. Um, I did decorate the inside of that one, so, and I have pieces to decorate this one too. So um, usually when I, cut my watercolor paper. I cut it a little bit bigger than I need it so that I have an extra little strip to go on the inside. So that's what I'm going to do on here. And I think I'll use glue dots just to, because they're small and will fit. And we're just going to trim off some of the purple. Now um, I'm going to bring in the third card and uh, I made it a different size than usual. Um, and the inspiration for that was a new friend of mine, <laughs> uh, Andrew Overton, who has been joining in on some of uh, my classes lately. And he's been joining us on Zoom. And we had a conversation last time on our last Zoom. And he, he said, uh, he suggested that I um, make the cards bigger it kind of makes it look like it has a frame. And so I was inspired to do that on this card, especially because, um, because the die is so big and there's not a lot of room to do uh, the layering around the outside edges. So I'm gonna bring that in just a sec after I finish this. Where's my... Okay, so let's just get this attached to the inside. So I've got an extra layer, just a tiny little border of the Orchid Oasis. So it's only an eighth inch um, bigger in each dimension. Of course, it's, uh, it's not exactly square. That makes me crazy. All right, well, it's just gonna have to be good enough. <laughs> All right, let's just put it in, commit. <laughs> Embrace my imperfection. You guys have to do that sometimes. Just go, like, go for it. <laughs> All right, so it's white on the inside, so just kind of spice it up a little bit. Just love it. Okay, so there. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. I love it. Okay, so there's that and that. Now, third card. So notice this other card. So thank you, Andrew, <laughs> if you're watching out there. Um, and hopefully you'll watch at some point or watch the replay, but you can see it's quite a bit taller and it's quite a bit wider. So it allowed me to have these lovely edges. Now I don't, I'm probably gonna have to put it in like a six by nine envelope in order to mail it to anybody. Um, and this one, for this one, I actually used um, the foam adhesive sheets to pop this up. It was a little challenging, but it has a lot of dimension because of that. It's even thicker than the three layers that I used on this one. But the foam adhesive sheets, um, getting all the little intricate pieces out, especially with this more detailed die was challenging. But I do love how that turned out. Now, I've prepared pieces to do the same thing with this background piece that I just created. And it's going to be stunning. I already know it. So um, I am not going to start doing the gluing and whatnot here, but I'm just going to show you 
to give you an idea of what it's going to look like. And I will put it together off camera you and you can check out my blog post for it. So what we're going to do here is, and that actually looks gorgeous just like that. Does it not? So pretty. This die is so pretty. But what we're going to do is I'm going to actually put that in behind. I'm going to trim off the, the side so I have something for the inside. And then it'll go on my starry sky layer. And then on this piece as a card body. So just kind of trying to give you an idea of what it's going to look like. And then I'll have the, the sentiment, same color scheme, sentiment. Um, and the inside will have a couple of layers as well. And I'll use what I trim off the edge here for the inside. So you can see that that's going to just be so pretty and it'll be the same size as that one. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> I will share that, like I said, on my blog. The blog post is usually up uh, by Friday or Saturday. Um, and uh, I will have that other one finished for you to check out. So I'm going to switch myself over for a second. Say hello. <laughs> hello, it's me. Okay, so yeah, the ending dimensions of this one are, I just made them to the size. So my card, my card base is nine and three quarters by six and a quarter. I guess I could switch this over and you guys could see. These will be in a, um, a, a tutorial that I'll um, create for this project. This tutorial will be in next week's newsletter. It always comes out on Wednesday. So I'll put together a tutorial, but it's nine and three quarters, which makes it four and not four and a half, four and five eighths, four and seven. I can't remember anyway, when it's folded um, by six and one eighth. So it's an odd size, <laughs> but again, I did it to the design so that I would have a nice mat and then a larger piece on the outside to go with it. Now I used on this one and on this one, I used the uh, Mossy Meadow ink, but it got diluted and it looks lighter. So um, the old olive went really well with it, even though that's not the, co the color ink that I used. And so that's what I went with on both of those um, cards. So you love them all, Barbara. I'm so glad. <laughs> um, I do too, actually. <laughs> Um, thank you so much, Barb, um, for, I'm, I'm glad you appreciate my creativity. Yay. I love, I love doing this. It's just so much fun and so much fun to share. I appreciate that you guys all tune in and, and watch and enjoy the projects that I share. So, um, come back again. <laughs> now, um, speaking of coming back, um, I am actually going to be taking a break from Facebook live. So I will not be on Facebook live next week. I've done the last couple, well, consecutive weeks, actually three consecutive weeks between, uh, product shares. And then the last two weeks I did projects, but, um, I am taking next week off because my husband and I are going to visit our daughter in West Virginia. So we are leaving on Friday. So Thursday night, I'll be busy getting ready for that. Um, but I will be back on, let's see, it's on this piece of paper here um, on November 7th. I'm sorry, November. <laughs> I'm getting my months mixed up today. September 7th. So two weeks from tonight on Thursday at 7 p.m. I will be live again. And just a couple of quick little reminders. I do have a host code going if you're um, a customer and would like to place an order. I also have my Taste of Sweet product shares available to order through September 4th, but I'm doing an early bird giveaway, um, either a drawing or you actually just get a, get a thing or two, depending on how many shares you order. And that ends tomorrow, August 25th. So if you're interested in my lovely Taste of Sweet product shares, taking advantage of Stampin' Up's um, color coordination, I'm sorry, um, product coordination, um, definitely take advantage of my Tasty with Sweet product shares. I think they're awesome. I did them really initially for me. <laughs> and uh, and now I get to offer them to other people too. So yay. And then again, the free PDF tutorial for today's lovely projects will be again in next week's uh, newsletter that comes out on Wednesday. So that's all I got for the newsy stuff. Um, and, uh, oh yeah, just in, in the description of the video, I'll have some other reminders, bonus days, coupons expire the end of the month and, uh, kits are on sale and that ends the end of the month. Um, yeah, none of that. You got links for the taste of a sweet product shares to reserve shares, um, check off the details. That's all in the description of this video. So you can check them out. 
Thank you so much we're, we're, for uh, your well wishes on the trip, Melissa. We are um, we see our daughter about three times a year, and uh, it's kind of a long drive, but we have a, a lovely time, and she lives in a beautiful place in the mountains, so um, we really enjoy um, going and having time with her and, and in the mountains. And I think we're going to get some good weather. It'll be a little cooler than it has been here, which has um, been in the 90s, crazy hot and uh, humid. Uh, even though we've had a couple of, uh, of nicer days sprinkled in, <laughs> at least in the morning anyway. Um, I thank you so much, Elizabeth. I, I, I'm glad to hear that you love my shares. I love my shares too. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. And um, I'll be back in a couple of weeks. You can always email me if you want to say something, chat or whatever, comment here. Um, in my page and definitely share, share this video. <laughs> I always forget to say that. Share and follow my Facebook page, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're watching this on YouTube, all the good stuff. I um, uh, appreciate it. Uh, helps me uh, build my audience and share my love of paper crafting with more people. Oh my gosh, Tracy, heat index here, 115. Ah, that's crazy. <laughs> I know it's not as bad here as it is in other places of the country, but it's still pretty darn hot and humid here. But uh, yeah. All right, everybody. Um, thank you so much again for joining in. We'll see you soon. Um, I'm so glad you like the cards, Rita. Yay. <laughs> um, and again, the tutorial will be available next Wednesday in my newsletter. So have a wonderful rest of your evening, lovely weekend, and we'll see you soon. Bye.